So I recently did a video, a uh, Frank Lloyd Wright tour of Los Angeles. I went around a bunch of houses in Hollywood, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills. And after I put it up, I got a bunch of messages that I missed one over in Pasadena. Now I didn't exactly miss it, I knew it was there. It was just to get from Hollywood to Pasadena, it looks pretty close on a map, but when you actually do the ride, a lot of traffic, a lot of lights, would have kind of doubled the distance of the bike ride that day. But you don't want to neglect like a house. And, and, there happens to be a KOM that's been on my list. So today I buzz into Pasadena to check those out. I'm Phil Gunn. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years, racing all over the world. Now I'm retired, but I'm not done suffering on my bike, climbing mountains as fast as I can, and going on crazy adventures. I couldn't be the best at racing, and I'm definitely the worst at retiring. Welcome to Worst Retirement Ever. So Pasadena, kind of, I would say LA old money, uh, a lot of nice houses, nice cars. There's an Ineos Grenadier, you don't see those every day. Pitcock? We're only a couple blocks from the Rose Bowl. Frank Lloyd Wright is on this street somewhere. Oh, oh, it's probably that one. Probably, pretty sure, pretty sure it's that one. This was the first of Frank Lloyd Wright's block houses in Los Angeles. You can see even the detail of these planters. He says that he used the blocks because they were the cheapest and ugliest thing in the building world. And he wanted to see what could be done with that. I don't think they're ugly. It has four bedrooms, four bathrooms, two kitchens. Think of how many cookies you could bake. Living room, formal dining room, and a semi-attached garage. The Millard House is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It has been fully restored and was last sold in 2015 for $3.6 million. It's currently lived in by folks who have made it clear over the years they don't like folks knocking on the door and asking for a tour. I get it, but you did buy a Frank Lloyd Wright house. It was built for Alice Millard, who was a rare bookseller and a friend of Frank Lloyd Wright. I guess she got a deal. The total cost was 17,000 US dollars which was $10,000 over budget. Just for frame of reference, $10,000 in today dollars is 184,000. That's still a steal, I understand that. The builder walked off of the job because of the budget problems, left Frank Lloyd Wright to do it himself. There's a letter that Alice Miller wrote to Frank Lloyd Wright complaining about the inadequate storm drain and the basement filled with muddy water. This house was featured in Star Trek and Westworld. Not gonna hang out here too long because they're not fans, apparently, of trespassing. Pasadena is a super nice place to ride around on a Saturday, explore, maybe get lost. There's a lot of interesting architecture around here, including stuff that, now that I've been paying attention to it, like this one, this appears to be kind of influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright. Look how it sort of blends in with the environment. This is organic architecture. The KOM attempt for this video is on the other side of the Rose Bowl. We're in the city of Glendale now. This is Chevy Chase Drive. And up just a bit, we have the Derby House, which is a Lloyd Wright. Remember, Lloyd Wright was Frank Lloyd Wright's son. It was built in 1926, around the same time as the other block houses uh, in the Mayan structural design that he and his father were doing around LA. 3,300 square feet, five bedrooms, three bathrooms. It was commissioned by James Derby, who was the founder of the Kentucky Derby. Just kidding. Dude had a terrible divorce lawyer. He and his wife separated before the home was completed, so only she and their children ever lived there. A repeated theme throughout are the abstract renderings of the yucca plants, which grow around the surrounding hills. This one is also in the National Register of Historic Places and remains a private residence. And unlike the last Lloyd Wright house that we saw, there have been no murders in this one, but the day is young. I don't get over to this part of town very often, but Chevy Chase happens to be a pretty cool little climb. Let's go for it. So Chevy Chase is a climb I've done many times. I used to live over in the Toluca Lake neighborhood, which was kind of closer to the Angeles Crest Highway is the nice riding from that part of town if you live downtown. Uh, and Chevy Chase is sort of the gateway to Little Tahunga, uh, Angeles Crest, a lot of the nice riding in that direction. Since I moved over to Woodland Hills, uh, I was in the west side for a while, and then I was in Woodland Hills, and now I kind of just stay in Malibu and, and don't leave there. But I know this climb very well. I rode this climb many times before I had Strava, to be honest. The climb, it's 2.6 miles, 600 feet. The, the gradient, it kind of stays pretty steady, 2 to, to 5%, and then it kicks at the end. There'll be a couple little hairpins, uh, some 8-9% gradients towards the top. So it's important to 
hold back a little bit, which I'm not doing super well. I'm staying within my range. I'm not going to completely explode, but I was, I wasn't super warmed up for this one, so I kind of came in a little hot, uh, and I, I will pay for it, but we're going to do our best. The time to beat is 8 minutes 57 seconds. I know for that I can do in the 425 to 450 range, so I really shouldn't ever see over 450 on this. Um, the flatter bits here is 1%. Um, the, there was no wind, thankfully. If there was some a bad headwind here, it could definitely ruin your day. But on this, these lower grades, try to just keep the speed up and stay arrow and not use too much fitness. That was the Lloyd Wright house just there on the left that we passed. Accelerate a little bit, now try to settle back in, get that momentum. I'm on the Factor 02 van for this one, their, their climbing bike. Probably would be faster on the Ostro since it's not that steep. But I kind of like the, the snap from a lighter bike. I like the acceleration sometimes. That was just the bike I happened to, to throw on the car for this one. I was planning to film this with the drone, but as soon as I got the drone in the air, there was just a bunch of cars that kind of came at the bottom. You can see it's not an empty road, but there's enough cars. I was like, I don't want to A, have my drone land and get run over, or B, cause an accident from someone rubbernecking or, or whatever goes on. Uh, so I left the drone in the car and went with the, the chest cam. This perspective has its, its ups and downs. There's not some, there's no crazy views on this one anyway. We're passing, there's a Chevy Chase Country Club. That is a private one. The Rose Bowl, that's a public golf course, I believe. I think everything Rose Bowl public. That is their cafe over there. A lot of cyclists hang out. Somebody waved at me from there on my first lap. Here it kicks a little bit, and I know there's a couple spots where it flattens out where I can recover, so I'm pushing a little bit harder than I should, but I'm not super scared. And then you know you can just kind of squeeze it out at the very end. But this is one, if you, if you blow up in the last third, you will regret it. But I had the, the live segment on my Wahoo and knew I was, at this point, I was like 25 seconds ahead or so. Not bad. This one hurt. This one, I'm recording this two days later. My abs are still sore. Um, kind of using my whole body on these steep parts. Numbers are good though. There's a fire station and a library up here on the left. Standing again. I'll stand when there's like a change of speed or a bend or something. If I if I lose a little speed, I'll stand to accelerate back up, and then I'll sit back down to try to hold that momentum. Okay, 
when does this end? Up here the drone would have been fine. There's not that many college houses up there. Lower down. Where it got here. I didn't pace as bad as I thought if I still have 500 watts at this point. I go as full dork as I could. Uh, I do have the speed suit on. You can tell by the long sleeve. That's the Starlight long sleeve time trial speed suit. My intersection up there is just a lot farther than I want it to be at this point. That was just like a two-way intersection. There's nothing coming from the right side. This one finds there's a million different segments for the climb. Uh, and I had a few of those before, but I, I, I do think this is kind of the correct one. You could look at the altitude, the, the full bottom to the top. I am kind of backing off a little bit so that I could sprint here. I want to finish strong. As you see it in the 300 watts, you know I screwed up a little bit. Let's just try and hold this speed to the line. Time to beat was 8.57. I managed 8 minutes and 19 seconds. Averaged 431 watts. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, that's it for my heavy breathing and my architecture for now, but this was fun. There's lots of cool things that I could just cruise around and show you in LA. Leave a comment with what you'd like to see here. You'd better be at Phil's Cookie Fondo this weekend if you live in LA, but any other weekend, highly recommend a ride around Pasadena, check out these spots, do a few laps of the Rose Bowl, enjoy the hills there, climb Chevy Chase, and I will put the two addresses of these houses in the description. Thanks for watching, see you next time. <laughs>